Hi guys, it's Mrs. Dale Stock. This time we are going to review IXL assignment Z1, which is identifying functions. All right, before we even get into this, let's do a little review of functions. When we are dealing with something that's a function, a lot of times I like to refer to it as a vending machine because with vending machines that every input so every button you press input has a unique output and in the case of a vending machine that would be the food so you know that it works properly if there's that unique relationship where i know that if i press button d5 it's going to get me doritos it's not going to be random it's not going to be where that button is assigned to three different things i could get doritos or a can of coke or a thing of donuts, all right? That wouldn't be a function because that means the vending machine is not working properly because it's a guessing game. I don't know what I'm gonna get when I press the button. The easiest way for me to remember and relate this back to math is for us to kind of freshen up our vocab. So in order for something to be a function, so it is a function if each input has a unique, output. Well, let's remind ourselves about what the vocabulary words input and output are. Input is all of your x values. And then output is all of your y values. And if every input has a unique output, the easiest way for me to recognize that is to remember that that means all of your X values have to be different. My Y's can repeat. I could have a vending machine with a whole row of Doritos because they're really popular, but they still each have their own individual button. Each compartment still has its own space. That way, if one runs out, I can move to the next. So in order for something to be a function, or in this case, a relation. So in order for a relation, which means a relationship between your X's and your Y's, to be a function, the X values cannot repeat. All right? So that's really the nitty gritty of it. That's what we're going to be looking for. In all of these examples today, we're going to be focusing on, is it a function? Do your X values repeat? All right, I'm gonna circle my X values and look at those. Let's see if they repeat. I have an 18, a six, a two, and a 19. All of those are different, which means every input has a unique output. So this qualifies as a function. All right, good deal. Ooh, yay, now we have a graph. All right, once again, with a graph, I'm looking to see are your X values different? Remember, this is your x-axis. So right here, that has an x value of one. Let's see, two, three, four, five, six. This point has an x value of six, seven, eight. This point has an x value of eight. All of those are different. None of them repeated, which means it is a function. All right, now an ordered pair. Same thing. We're just going to focus in on those X's. Are all of these X values different? 285? Yes, they are. It's another function. All right, I think we need to jump up a level. This is way too easy, isn't it? We've done one like that. Ooh, here we go. All right, let's try one of these. All right, this is multiple choice, but it wants to know which one of the relations is a function. So it takes a little bit more looking, but we're still looking for the same thing. All right, first number is our X values. Oop, my eights repeat. So therefore it's not a function. That would be like me pressing button number eight and I could get two different things. I could either get Doritos or a can of Coke. I don't know which. All right, here we go. Ooh, once again. I got a negative eight and a negative eight. I have an X value that repeats. It's not a function. Ooh, 14, negative one, and 18. 
all of those X values are different. So I think that's the winner, but I don't want to get it wrong and mess up my SMART score. So let's check again. 10, 20, 10. Yep, those tens repeat. It's not a function. Good. All right, let's do one more. We have graphs. So same concept, only we have a graph. So we want to know which one's a function. All right, the best way when you're looking at lots of graphs is, I kind of did it earlier, but to draw a vertical line. Because if you draw a vertical line, that will show you, that kind of traces that X value. And it will help you know if you have any repeating Xs. So this vertical line only goes through one dot. But this vertical line, see how it goes through this dot and this dot? That means I have two points with the X value of one. I have repeating X's, not a function. Only one, only one, only one. So when I trace that vertical line, I'm tracing my X values, it only hit one point each, which means I believe this should be our function. But again, I don't wanna rush through this IXL and hurt my SMART score, so I'm gonna double check. We'll scroll down here. Let me erase this line. All right, this point's good. Vertical line only goes through once, but uh-oh, right here. See how it hits twice? That means there's two points that have an X value of negative one, not a function. And last but not least, I can see very quickly right here does not pass the vertical line test. I got two points, nada, which means I was correct. That second one is our function. All right, there you go. Remember guys, as you're working on this, your goal is to get a SMART score of a 60 or higher. 80 is 100%, that's considered mastery. Once you get past that, you do get in the challenge zone and it can get a bit trickier, all right? So keep on working hard and good luck, bye.